These FrameForge video tutorials take you step-by-step step through the basic functions and the special features of FrameForge Previs Studio, the groundbreaking pre-visualization and storyboarding software. With FrameForge Previs, you can easily build your sets. Real-time lighting with multiple light sources that combine in color and intensity and throw multiple shadows are at your fingertips. You can block your shot, set your camera, set your lens, you can even edit your sequence. You can bring in your actors and customize them to the vision that you have in mind. FrameForge is the most efficient and affordable way to communicate your vision from the page to the screen. Welcome back, friends. This is Chris, and a uh, long time no see. I do apologize. It's been a while since I put out a tutorial, but I'm back now. That's what's important, and I have a new tutorial for you, obviously. Uh, in this one, the topic is going to be working with cameras. All right, by now I know that you are very familiar with the interface itself. You know where everything is, and that's because you've seen video tutorial one, introduction to the interface. On top of that, I know that you're comfortable with concepts like set construction, set editing, object customization, character customization, uh, using sets, and that's because you've seen FrameForge previous video tutorials two and three. That's a shameless plug and I, I do apologize. All right. So if you own the Pro or Stereo Edition, you've seen these physical cameras over here in the Props Library. And no matter which license you hold, I know you've seen the floating cameras. In FrameForge Previs, there are two types of cameras. Floating cameras and physical cameras. Floating cameras, well, let me just cut to the chase. These cameras are invisible. You can't see them on set and you can't attach them to any other kind of equipment. On the other hand, physical cameras, these are more than just props. These are fully functional, fully maneuverable camera objects that are visible on set, and you can actually attach them to their real-world counterparts like dollies and jibs and cranes. Bear in mind, however, physical cameras are only found in the professional or the stereographic editions of FrameForge Previs. The Core Edition only has floating cameras. So let's take a look at both. Here I am with a floating camera, and here I am with a physical camera. I think the differences should be clear to you. But which one's better? Let's take a look at a shot through a physical camera. And let's take a look at a shot taken through a floating camera. There's not a lot of difference there. Here's what it boils down to. Physical cameras can be attached and they're highly visible and they make testing out a shooting environment uh, much easier. On the other hand, take a look at this previous file. Now I've got a set with a lot of activity going on and I've got a lot of cameras capturing that activity. Now it'd be difficult, if not impossible, for me to make all of this happen without accidentally capturing one of those floating cameras in the background shots of one of the other cameras. Hence, I used the floating cameras. Let's talk about camera controls for a moment. You should recognize these multi-throttle controls. They're, dire they're located directly below the live view camera. We'll start with crane control, and the crane control moves the live camera in the vertical plane, meaning up or down. Up and down. Pretty simple. Let's talk about dolly control now. This will move the camera in the horizontal plane, meaning forwards, backwards, side to side, but with no elevation change.
Let's talk about zoom control now. The zoom control magnifies or shrinks the image. Zoom works exactly the way you think it would. Zoom in and zoom out. Now there are a number of these little quick click buttons that enable special functionality that are kind of surround all of these multi-throttle controls. And if you hover your mouse over it, a dialog box will pop up explaining what they do. Take a look at them because they'll save you some time. In this example, I'm using the step back function. Also, remember that with a zoom control, you can specify predetermined focal lengths in the prime lenses menu of the edit set parameters menu. Pan and tilt control. This controls the angle of the camera without altering its position or height. Basically, this means to point the camera in a direction, either left or right, point it up or down, but not to change the location of it. Let's see another example. Here I am, here I am in the future, um, and here I am in an alternate universe, and what, hold on. Not cool, guys. Let's look at a better example. I think you get the gist of it. Let's move on. Him again? Go away, Dad. Roll control alters a camera's orientation around its longitudinal axis. That is, imagine a line extending from the back of the camera through the lens and off into the horizon. Basically, this means to spin the camera. Almost as if you were turning it on its side, then upside down, and back around again. Are you following me? Let's take a look at another example here. Well, we've already seen that. Let's see a better example. That's what I'm talking about. Get it? All right, again, about these camera control shortcuts. There are a number of these quick click buttons around each multi-throttle camera control. They enable special functionality, so check them out. Let's look back at my previous file again. is isn't already readily apparent, that gray transparent triangle extending from a camera, that's the field of view for a camera. Now, if you wanted to add additional cameras to your set, well, if you were working with physical cameras, all you would need to do is drag one onto the set as you would any other bit of set dressing. But with a floating camera, all you need to do is double click, as I just did, and a floating camera will be added. Now check this out. If you have an object that's already been selected and is highlighted, when you double click to place that floating camera, that floating camera will automatically be pointed at and focused on that object. Again, that's another time saver, so bear it in mind. Alright, let's see one more example of that in action. I've got three cameras on set, and I'm going to add a few more. But uh, I'm going to highlight this actor object that I have in the middle, right there. And I'm going to add floating cameras just by double clicking in the blueprint view. They'll automatically be added and automatically and pointed at that character. Now, if you wanted to change the number of monitors you have, you can go to the View drop-down menu, and the very first option is Number of Monitors. You can have between 1 and 8, but bear this in mind. Brainforge needs to render an image for every single monitor that's live. So, uh, if you start running into speed or lag issues, and you've got all 8 monitors live, try reducing the amount to something a little more reasonable, like 3 or 4. Hopefully, that'll clear you up. Again, that field of view, that's that gray, transparent triangle extending out from the camera and into the horizon. 
And remember, multiple monitors can slow your computer down. Just a little bit. It depends on the age of your hardware. Let's recap. We talked about floating cameras versus physical cameras, the pros and cons of both types, moving and manipulating the cameras using the camera controls, adding additional cameras to the set, camera fields of view, and the possible impact of using too many monitors. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be talking about and demonstrating how to use those physical cameras with their real-world counterparts, such as dollies, jibs, and cranes. Until next time, see ya.